All right, so this is the uh, video part two. It's actually part two of my third video. I was talking about how to fill in the PowerScribe reporting template for radiologists who are reporting the uh, DEXA scan results. And this is the comparison template, the one that has a comparison. So I had covered everything on the previous video down to impression. And now I wanted to talk about the impression. So um, for this template, there are three separate impressions. So the first one is sort of a general comparison of the who category. What was it? What is it? Sort of what 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 was the state, what the patient was, and what are they now? The second one is a detailed discussion of whether interval change is statistically significant or not. And then the third one is just the current state of affairs. What does the patient have and what do we need to do about it? So let me um, uh, look at each of these uh, in detail. First, let me reset them to the uh, baselines. This is the way they usually are. Yeah, this is the way it'll appear when you first open it up and then you'll have to change it if you need to. So um, let's look at the first impression number, sort of the general who category. So it's in here. And these have pick lists. So in, in simple words, it, this is the patient was normal in terms of who category and is still normal. So double click that one and it'll just say T-scores remain in the normal range. Now there's every, every um, option possible here. So if the patient was osteopenic and is now normal, click that one. And, it'll, and the correct verbiage will come out. T-scores are now in the normal range, whereas previously they were in the low bone density range. Or here's another example. Say they, the patient was osteoporotic and now is osteopenic. Double click that one. And it'll say T-scores are now in the low bone density range, whereas previously they were in the osteoporotic range. So that's impression number one. All right, then the second impression is... Um, Next one, let's tab into it. And it also has a nice pick list, so be sure to use the pick list. And this is the most complicated one, and it's about how to say whether there's been a significant, statistically significant change in bone mineral density. So um, this one you'll use commonly. It's gonna, it's gonna say there's no, it's, the, the shortcut is no significant change using the spine. So it'll say no statistically significant interval change in bone mineral density of the lumbar spine when compared to the previous exam. The lumbar spine is generally the most valid site for comparison. But say that it has been a change. So say there's been a change in bone mineral density and you're going statistically significant and you it's an increase and you're going to use the spine. Then you would use this one and you say there has been a statistically significant interval increase in bone mineral density of the lumbar spine with a blank. When compared to the previous exam, the lumbar spine is generally the most valid site for comparison. Now, I can't put a, um, a, a field or a pick list within an impression. So I just left a blank there. So here what you want to do is you want to enter in this blank, you'll put your cursor there, click it, and then speak in, and you'll give the bone mineral density in grams per centimeter squared and the percent change. So in this case, it's that there's been a statistically significant interval increase in bone mineral density of the lumbar spine, and you'll say of 0 0.01 grams per centimeter squared or 3.7%. So you'll give those two values, the bone mineral density and then the percent change. And you'll insert it right in there. Or let's give another example, maybe a decrease, but you're going to use the hip. Like some, like these first three, are, or these, these three here, are, you're using the spine because the spine is most valid. But say there's a problem with the spine, and you're going to use the hip instead. So then you would click this one. And it'll say the hip is used instead of the lumbar spine for comparison due to technical limitations in the lumbar spine. There has been no significantly significant interval change in bone mineral density of the hip when compared to the previous exam. So it's basically saying, you know, no significant change, but we're using the hip. And then the same thing if you're going to have a hip, using the hip, but there's been an increase or a decrease. And then, again, whenever there's a change, you're going to have a blank here and you're going to fill it in. So there's been an increase in bone mineral density of the hip of... 0 0.06 um, grams per centimeter squared or 3.1 percent and fill those in there and then now very often the comparisons are going to be on different machines so you're going to click this one here that says different machines and you say comparison of bone mineral density between the current and comparison scans is not reliable since they were performed on different machines 
When scans are done on different units or at different institutions, comparison of bone mineral densities is limited and unreliable. Or maybe uh, the, you had to use a wrist. Well, you can't, you're not supposed to do comparisons of wrists. Say they had bilateral hip prostheses and lumbar hardware or something. You couldn't come up with anything but a wrist measurement. So you could still categorize them, but you can't do a specific comparison. So you would use this. And then now this is up for discussion. I'm not sure about this, but to, to use the mixed response. But I have it in here for now. We can discuss it. But um, it's about um, if the patient has, and you believe the results in the spine, and you believe the results in the hip, but it looks like the, they went in different directions. You know, the spine increased and hip decreased, or the spine decreased and hip increased. Some people say, well, just go with the spine. The spine's the most reliable. But, you know, if you feel like it's a significant change in the hip, you know, you may want to mention that there's been a mixed, a mixed response. So if you want to do that, you double click the mixed response, and let's say the spine increased, hip decreased. You would click this one, and then you're going to get there has been a mixed interval change in bone mineral density since the comparison with a statistically significant interval increase in bone mineral density of the lumbar spine, put the values, of 0.05 grams per centimeter squared or 5% when compared to the previous exam, but with a statistically significant interval decrease in bone mineral density of the total hip, and put it in there, of 0.01 grams per centimeter squared or 7% when compared to the previous exam. So that's the idea of these pick lists, and there pick lists, and there may be some other things you might have to highlight it and just and just speak into the um, box. But this will give you most of them that you'll have to use, and also an idea of you know approved verbiage. Now, um, okay, so that's the first two impression numbers. Now the last impression number is let me toggle or just toggle into it, and it's just sort of the current state of the affairs. It's like what does the patient have, and what do they need. And you know the um, various societies recommend that you, you know, give certain statements about secondary bone density and recommend the recommendations for follow-up and to consider treatment for patients who have osteopenia, osteoporosis. So we need to put that in somewhere. So this is the court sort of current state of affair for the patient at this time. So if they're normal, they just get T-scores are in the normal range. If they're osteopenia, you click that one and you get T-scores are in the low bone density range at this time, meeting the criteria for osteopenia. Potential treatment should be based on individual risk factors. It is important to exclude secondary causes of low bone density. Patients with low bone density should have regular DEXA scans, and Medicare allows testing every one to two years. So that's what you get for osteopenia, and then osteoporosis. We'll double click that, and you'll get this same this thing, which is similar but a little stronger. The risk of fracture is increased. Consider treatment if clinically appropriate, and then the same thing about the oste secondary osteoporosis and regular DEXA scans. And that's it. So the idea was to try to standardize the terminology and uh, the report layout and uh, try to make it as easy to use as possible. It, it does have a lot of fields and seems quite overwhelming at first, but um, with a little practice, you know, you can fill in these fields pretty quickly. And I think it does add a lot to, to have a standardized report. Just one idea. It's a still a work in progress. Um, you know, there are, of course, a million ways to do it. This is just one way. But uh, I thought I would um, share what we have for now. So thank you for your attention, and I will figure out how to shut this off.